Hey everyone, it's me, X Canadensis, and today I have for you a Barbara collection. I purchased a big portion of someone's Barbie collection, specifically the dolls from the 2000s that I was the most excited about. And I found these on Facebook Marketplace, which was pretty exciting. Basically, they were in Georgia and I was gonna drive over there anyway to go to Ikea, but Ikea didn't have what I needed. We were trying to work out when we could meet up and it wasn't working. So the seller just offered to send them to me, which was very unexpected. So of course I said yes. Each of these dolls was $20 each, so I paid $260, which sounds like a lot, but you'll see. I, in my opinion, got a fantastic deal. These are all in box and in really, really good condition. And the story behind them is quite interesting. The seller moved into a house and there were just a bunch of Barbies in it. So they're not the original owner. I have no idea what the story behind these dolls are, but now they are mine and they get to live in my doll room and be super happy. A few of these I might unbox, but most of them are going to be staying in box. There's only one so far that I've decided with certainty that I'm going to be unboxing. So let's get started. I'm just gonna kind of grab one. Okay. So, okay, so this, I don't believe is a 2000s one. I think this is a late 90s one. Um, she says 97 on her box, but I'm not sure. I'm not super up to date with, well, obviously not up to date if I'm in the 90s and 2000s, but I'm not a Barbie expert by any means. I just really like this era of Barbies because this specific look were the ones that I had as a kid, the late 90s, early 2000s ones. This doll is Barbie as Sleeping Beauty, and I have another version of Sleeping Beauty that was actually sent to me by one of you guys, and I love her, but this one specifically looks like a Barbie movie doll, and I thought that was super cool because she can display really nicely with other Barbie movie dolls, and I just thought she was really beautiful, and yeah, so I picked her up. So this is Barbie as Sleeping Beauty, the fairy tale princess who slept for a hundred years, and as you can see, the boxes are in really nice condition. They're not perfect by any means, but they're really, really nice. And this doll is just super pretty, super pretty. And I love the dress. We've got one little flaw here that I should be able to pop out. Um, I usually don't collect inbox stuff, so I'm not 100% familiar with how to fix stuff like that. And we've got a whole story on the back here. This is the children's collector series, which, oh, that's interesting. So, ooh. Oh, play out the story of Sleeping Beauty with your doll and then display her on her doll stand to decorate your room. She's the perfect choice to begin or add to your Barbie doll collection. That is so interesting. I didn't know they did like a line of like children's collector ones. I always just thought they uh, made adult collector ones that kids happen to get a hold of. So that's actually really cool because she is like up to the quality standard that kids could play with her and not completely wreck her. That's so cool. Okay, so here is Barbie as Sleeping Beauty as the first doll in this collection. The next one, I guess we'll just go right here. We have Clara from The Nutcracker. She is so pretty. This doll actually evaded me because I bought a bunch of, around this time last year actually, I bought a collection of Barbie movie dolls and this doll was supposed to be in it, but the seller right before I had got there sold her online to somebody else. And I was really upset because I was like, I drove here to buy them from you in cash and you just um, sold it to somebody else, but it's fine because they weren't in my possession yet and I was paying in cash. So the money hadn't been exchanged, but I was really sad because I really, really wanted to get a hold of Clara and now I have her. It's so weird though, because like, I don't even have this doll out of box. It is the first Barbie movie, but overall she's fairly common i would think because these dolls were really popular but for some reason i cannot find her so to have her in box is super exciting and i actually have a pretty decent collection of the inbox early barbie movie dolls and i love her i actually never had this one as a kid i had rapunzel and onward so it's really really cool to have this one so here she is the sugar plum princess and it's so cool to see like where they started so she comes with a little stand that i think you roll and then it twirls the doll around and there's the little Barbie comb, which that specific Barbie hairbrush is really good. Before I got um, got smart and started using metal brushes for my dolls, I used these and they actually work really well for detangling, but uh, metal brush or um, plastic brushes over time can destroy your doll's hair if you're not careful. So I use metal now. Um, God, she's pretty. Her dress is so amazing. Look at her. Um, and then the back of the box, listen, if dolls like this did not have cool backs, of the boxes like back cards i would not be interested in keeping them in box at all to be honest like i prefer to be able to play with my dolls and manipulate them around and stuff but with barbie specifically they're so common secondhand that i'm not worried about getting a hold of secondhand ones so i mean i'm more inclined to leave them in the box for that reason it says you can transform barbie into the sugar plum princess put on a sparkly skirt and let down her hair 
and add hair jewels too. So there must be some kind of skirt gimmick. I've never held this doll in my hands before in my life. So sorry about that. Coming to video fall 2001, I was two years old, two. <laughs> um, so the first Barbie movie I specifically remember being super invested in and having a ton of merchandise for was Rapunzel. And I think the timeline makes more sense there. Oh my gosh, there's the My Size Sugar Plum Princess, the Nutcracker fashion gift set and a Hallmark ornament. I really love this era of Barbie because they like really, I was, it's cause they want it. It's cause it's the one I grew up with, but I love the way they did the merchandising and tied a bunch of stuff together and did a whole series to go with it. It's so exciting to me. Single releases, <laughs> single release dolls from before that. I'm sorry, I popped the plastic in a little bit. Um, single release dolls, like her are super beautiful, but being able to see like a whole universe for one doll or a few dolls in that universe is so cool. So I love the Barbie movie dolls specifically so much for that. Even though, you know, there were, I'm pretty sure they did the Kellys, they did a couple of horses or something. I mean, it's showing them on the side of the box and then they did the prince and that's it. I, I prefer when they did like a ton more characters, but um, having just, oh, <laughs> I was saying all that. It's literally right here. Yeah, we got a horse, we got some Kellys and a prince. Which is more than you can say for Miss Sleeping Beauty, unfortunately. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I just think it's super cool to be able to expand the world that your doll lives in. I don't know. I always thought that was really, really fun. All right, the next doll. This is so exciting. This is Julia from Barbie Fairytopia. And I had this doll as a kid and loved her. I still have my childhood one. She's just missing quite a bit of stuff. These, for some reason, they're little um, plastic tops. They come off and they're really nice actually, but I used to like bending them so they would snap. So <laughs> mine are not in great condition and these are super fragile too, the skirts. I think you snap them in the front and back together or something. But anyway, I don't even remember seeing this doll in box when I was a kid. I have both of them. I have Crystal and Julia and I loved both of them. I, I loved her specifically because I thought it was cool that she, she had brown hair and blue eyes like me. I thought like, oh my gosh, that's neat. And I loved the Fairytopia dolls. These were my specific jam. I was not into dolls as a kid, but Fairytopia, they were fairies. That was all I needed. I really, really liked them for that reason. Um, but I hated playing with dolls because if they, did, they didn't have stands. Only my Mycene dolls had stands. And even then I had carpets, so they wouldn't stand up. And it drove me crazy that they would like fall over because I specifically, I wasn't really as much of a make my dolls talk to each other type of person. I like to make them a little setup and then like make them stand and pose in it and stuff. That was like specifically what I liked. I did do the stand and talk to each other thing too, don't get me wrong, but I specifically liked setting things up and it would take me hours of setting up before I felt like, okay, I can play in this now. And Barbies just didn't come for me. So that's why I wasn't super into dolls as a kid, but doll stands exist and are readily available now. So it's not a problem anymore. But look at this Julia doll. So she's a bit misprinted, but she's like, in box so it's not really a big deal to me but she has her eyes um, a little further up she's so pretty she's so pretty but yeah this was this was the first doll that i ever had that like i felt looked like me in any capacity obviously she doesn't actually look like me but as a kid i was very superficial right i was like oh she has brown hair and blue eyes that's all i need i also thought flora from wings club looked like me if you want a sense for how my brain worked as a kid because she had brown eyes or, sorry not brown eyes she has Green eyes, but she had brown hair and that was all I needed. It's not even the same color as mine. Um, I wonder if she still works. No, aw, that's okay. Mine from when I was a kid doesn't work anymore either, but she worked a few years ago. So I wonder if the batteries just crap out after a while and she has her second outfit. And I love the holographic on the box and the box design of these is super cool. And it also advertises Alina who I'd love to have in box because um, her fiber optic wings and stuff, it would be really neat. And I remember seeing her in box. I think I got it for my birthday or something. Next, this one's kind of funny. This is Barbie as the Sugar Plum Fairy. <laughs> so this was the 90s version from the collector's lineup. And this is just kind of cool to see an earlier version of Clara from the Nutcracker. And she, it says she's the first edition from the classic ballet series. Aw, her shoes are like pearlescent. Okay, she's really pretty. And I think I actually have some others from this line, or at least, no, I think the ones I have are from, like they're auxiliary to the movie dolls. I'm not sure. I have the snowflake and the flower fairy, but I think they don't go to this line. But if they do, then that makes sense. But um, I just thought she was very, very pretty. I'm. She has um, 
more of a 90s looking face to me. Maybe that's just me. 96. And I know the box date isn't always the date that they released. I prefer the faces that look closer to the 2000s ones because, again, that's what I grew up with. But she's still super, super pretty. Oh, look at her. This is such a cool doll. And it tells you the little story. Classic ballet series features classic ballets come to life with Barbie. Play out the story of the Nutcracker with your doll or display her on her doll stand. She's the perfect choice to begin your Barbie doll collection. So clearly using the same blurb as this one. So cool. So cool. I don't know. I had to get her. I thought she was really cool. There were a few other dolls. Oh my gosh. I cannot learn to stop doing that. Um, there were a few other dolls from this um collector edition lineup, but I only picked out the ones that I specifically liked because there were a lot of people interested in the dolls. They're all going to find homes, but I picked out the ones that I specifically really liked because they were 20 each. Um, speaking of which, the next one is also a collector's edition one. I have no idea about this doll. I just thought she was so unbelievably beautiful, so I picked her out. So she seems like more of like a probably a label doll or maybe she was before because it just says Barbie collectible. I don't know, but this is the Morning Sun Princess. And she has this cool like halo crown and her hair well her hair is like pretty messed up actually there's a lot of it i don't know if you can tell but there's a lot of it that's like coming forward um but it says morning sun princess barbie doll and there's an evening star princess and a midnight moon princess midnight moon princess seems to be superior this dress is really close to daphne from wings club's dress as like the nymph which is very interesting to me i just noticed that um, it says, she's the ruler of the shining sun. She brings the daylight to everyone. She washes the meadows with golden rays and warms the earth and lights up the days. <laughs> Look for her just at the dawn and she'll brighten your world all day long. And it says she is for the adult collector, 14 and older. Okay, interesting. And she seems to be from right at 2000 or at least that's what the box date is. Again, I know box date isn't always correlated to the actual final release date, but she's pretty cool. I thought she was really beautiful and... I don't, I don't know what any of these dolls are actually worth. Like, I don't like paying attention to eBay prices because they make me feel horrible because I'll find a doll and I'm like, oh, she's pretty. And then I look up the eBay price and I'm like, oh, <laughs> so I have no idea. I just, any Barbie doll to me, $20 is a deal, especially well, in box, obviously, but like even out of box, 20 bucks for like a doll with all of her stuff from 20 plus years ago is a steal. So I'm very happy. And her box is really cool. It has like plastic on the top like that's this is cardboard this is plastic it's interesting she's so cute she's beautiful so maybe someday i can complete the set or not this era of barbie i refuse to buy on ebay specifically because these were super commonly collected kind of like the 90s star wars toys and this is this is an anecdote i always use the 90s the 80s star wars toys were known to be valuable and worth money they were nostalgic people liked them so when the 90s set came around people collected them like crazy they were super super heavily collected so now they are everywhere they're in bargain bins similar to beanie babies since everybody collected them they're all in perfect condition in box right there's so many and the supply is far outweighing the demand so they go very down in value so even dolls like this i imagine probably sell for quite a bit on ebay because barbie movie doll clara probably does too but you'll find them if you just go on facebook marketplace go on craigslist go to random collectible shops you'll find them they're everywhere because th these lineups were over collected right now there's a collectible bubble so everything's going up in value um in kind of a weird way and that'll crash soon but all i'm saying is ebay is not the only resource to find things for sale i promise i very seldom pay more than ten dollars each for my dolls in box twenty dollars each and i have quite a few that people would be like oh my gosh i really want that one or i would pay this much for that one no like you don't have to trust me anyway moving on we actually have some 2010s era dolls in here as well but i'm gonna save them till the end okay so this one is super cool this is the butterfly art barbie i remember one of my friends having this one as a kid and i don't know she's just super interesting i think she's a 90s one um 98 is her box date but um i feel like she was like in kb toys when i was a kid isn't she cool she's got like tattoos she has a crocheted top like she just screams her time period look at her tan and her her hair is so like it's crimped this is one I would love to have out of box. Look at her little skirt too. And she has these little friendship bracelets on. This doll is just so cute. So, so cute. And look at, I'm so happy playing with my butterfly art Barbie. And it says cool decorations for Barbie and you to wear. And 
We got temporary tattoos. So I can look like Butterfly or Barbie too, but this one's in box, so she will be staying in box. I like how it says includes two sheets of fun decorations. They, I'm sure they were worried about the, the controversy of selling tattoos to children. Ah, oh, that's so scandalous, a scandaloso. Um, so I guess they put decorations and butterfly art. But no, she just has a big belly tattoo. Oh, and you can put them on the doll, it looks like. And your face. I'm gonna show up to work like that. <laughs> um, it says, have fun decorating Barbie and you with cool washable decorations. <gasps> There's a Christy, Teresa, and Kira. I have never seen those ones before. And well, I probably have at some point, but I did not. I was not like currently aware that they exist. Oh, wow. I like that Christy and Kira have their friendship bracelets on their ankles. That's really cute. I think the, oh, and the top shapes are different too. I like Teresa and Christy's tops the best, I think. That's so cool. I'll have to keep my eyes peeled for more of them. This one's adorable. This was a really cute doll and... I had to add her. She's like one of the only Slimbox ones. Well, I have some 2010s Slimbox ones, but I don't consider them Slimbox. I think they just literally are in Slimboxes. All right, so the next one, really exciting. I've never had this doll before. She's from Fairytopia. Well, you'll see. From the Fairytopia extended universe. And I really wanted this one for a long time, but when I was a kid, I already had an Alina doll. So I think I must have decided that I didn't want her. Uh, but when I learned that she existed a little later when I started collecting. I was still a kid, but I was like 11, 12. Um, I, was, I was like, why don't I have this one? I really like her. I had the other Magic of Rainbow dolls, but I spoiled it. It is Magic of Rainbow, right? I always think it's Magic of the Rainbow, but I don't think it is. Um, oh, it is the Rainbow. I'm just an idiot. Okay, but we have Rainbow Adventure Alina from Barbie Magic of the Rainbow. And... I picked this one out and the seller was like, I actually have two of this one. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll get both. So um, this is a bit excessive, but I'm thinking either I'm gonna unbox one of these or I can trade with someone. I'm not sure yet. Please don't hound me to sell her to you in the comments because by the time this video is posted, I will likely already have a plan. But how cool is this doll? I loved the other dolls. I loved Lumina specifically. But I have Lumina Glee and Sunburst, and then I never had any of the other stuff. I feel like, I obviously I wasn't super into dolls in general, but I was really falling out of dolls at this point. I was super into Little as Pet Shops when this movie came out, so. Um, also, she comes with this DVD game. Did they all come with this? Because that's amazing. It says Alina is my DVD game remote control. So I see that she has like a little remote hole <laughs> on her choker and on her necklace. This is super, super cool. I wonder if this is like a separate version than the others because she comes with the DVD game or if this was just the main one and that was her gimmick because most of the Barbie movie dolls had some interesting gimmick like that. I don't know, but isn't she cool? And this is one of the examples, guys. If you watch my videos, like, you know, I'm on the fence about molded on pieces, but overall, when they're used correctly, I think they're gorgeous. And this is one of those cases, the vibrant colors on this piece and the molding of it and everything, it's so beautiful. And since this is a character doll and not necessarily a fashion doll, like I would consider this a fashion doll, a molded on piece on this doll would be really annoying. But this is more of like a movie character doll that is also kind of a fashion doll. So it doesn't really bug me when they have molded on pieces. Does she not have shoes? That's strange. I guess none of them had shoes. I thought that they did and I just lost them. That's interesting. I mean, they don't, they probably just don't wear shoes in the movie. Um, but I just think she's really beautiful and I love her wings. I always thought they were paper this whole time, but are they fabric? They look like fabric in there. Huh. Maybe this is an alternate version. I have no idea. But it says, return to the enchanted land of Fairytopia where your favorite fairy friends discover the magic of the rainbow at fairy school and learn a valuable lesson about friendship along the way. And I want to play this DVD game so bad. Also, Fairyoki. That is the greatest pun. I need those. Fairyoki wings. <laughs> Beautiful. Her wings flutter. Man, I wish I could make her wings flutter. But I am going to be good. <laughs> and I'm going to leave both of them in their boxes. Available spring 2007, it says. For the movies. Oh my gosh. I was eight years old. Eight years old. <laughs> Alrighty. Next, so the next three dolls are 2010s era dolls, which I also really love. That's when I started collecting dolls. And although 
I didn't buy any Barbies at that time. My little sister was young and was getting Barbies pretty regularly and I saw them at the store. I saw toy reviews of them. I was super invested in the toy world at that time. So I was hyper aware of them and I wanted them bad, but I had specific things that I was allowed to purchase and these, I mean, not like allowed to purchase, but you know, I had a very set budget for dolls, so I couldn't really collect from every line. So I was like, okay, Monster High, sometimes Ever After High, and sometimes Winks, and that was my specific little little thing. And I only wiggled out of that a couple times, like with Pinky Cooper. I I put all the other dolls aside. I was like, Pinky Cooper must be mine, but I was not able to get these. But now I have them, so let's see them. First, we have this Barbie Fashionistas doll. I love this era of Fashionistas so much. These were like the original Fashionistas. This is Glam. And I've been holding out on these because I think that they should be common at thrift stores, but I almost never find them, which is such a shame. Oh, interesting. She has um, weird knees. They probably don't twist. Um, but I just thought she was really beautiful and she has all her stuff and she was $20 and she's from the specific era that I like. And you can see the other characters as well. I have this one's outfit, but not her. And I just really hope someday I can get at least one of each character because they're all so beautiful. I always thought it was kind of annoying that there's literally four blonde Barbie characters in this. And then we get, um, she almost looks like Skipper to me, but she's probably, I don't know who she's meant to be. And then this doll's face mold is so gorgeous, but I don't know. That was kind of a weird lineup to do, but they're really beautiful. They're really beautiful. The designs on these were on point, but they were not afraid to go full bubblegum pink and full Barbie pink. This is like, this is the era that I associate the most with Barbie pink and not in like a, I want to vomit, there's too much pink kind of way. Like this is, there's too much pink, but I love it. This is Barbie kind of way. Um, I believe these are, oh, 2009. Well, the box date is 2009, but I, I feel like they released in 2010, but I could be wrong. But Oh great, find. I never see these secondhand, especially in box, and I I look. So it was a very exciting find. She just ended up in the same house as these other ones, but I'll never know why because all right. I have two more Barbies, and then I have one really strange doll that I just had to get because she was bizarre, and then another one that is one of my holy grail dolls, so I'm super, super excited about her. These two I'm very excited about. Last year, I think around this time as well, I found one of these dolls in box at the thrift store, but her box was mangled. It was so bad, so I unboxed her. But I, now I have two more in box in perfect condition, and I believe they're actually from the same set as mine. No, mine's not on their packaging. Um, no, mine's from the jeans set. I'm sorry. This one's from the original set. Now you know what I'm talking about. Barbie looks dolls. So I, or Barbie looks Brooke, Barbie basics dolls. So I have, are they numbered? This is model number eight from collection one. And this is model number 10. And they're so beautiful. Look. So I have two more Barbie basics dolls. So that brings my collection up to three. I have one from the jeans collection again, and now I have two from the little black dress collection. And they are beautiful. Look at them. I love the faces and hairstyles and like the outfits on these dolls. They're so cool. It is going to be incredibly difficult to like to stop myself from unboxing these because I really want to experience them out of box, but I also really want to leave them in box because this packaging is so iconic to me. These came out, well, their box date is 2009, but I just... I remember these so vividly, specifically the red set. I remember seeing that because I loved going to Target for Monster High. So this is so cool. Look at her. So who's my favorite here? I didn't get to see good pictures of them at all. Um, I think my favorite one is number 10, but I really, really like both of them. Oh, they're so cool. I think the dress is superior on eight for sure. Like I really like that ruched part, if that's even the word for it. Uh, but this this dress is really simple and cute. She has painted nails. They both do. I don't know. I just really like this one. I think her makeup and stuff is like really beautiful. Do y'all get it with Barbie Basics? I feel like people either like really get it or they just don't. And Barbie Basics is just glorious. I really, really love these dolls. And I'm so happy that they happen to be in this set. These were one of the ultimate deciding factors on this whole set. Um... When it was going to be shipped and it was expensive shipping, it wasn't actually that bad because I, I asked them, like, can you use UPS or FedEx, please? Because that's so much cheaper than USPS. And usually sellers tell me no. And it's like, 
which is understandable. They don't usually um, sellers on Facebook Marketplace aren't super familiar with shipping and they've only used USPS and it makes sense. But I asked them if they'd use UPS or FedEx because it would be way cheaper and they said yes. So uh, the shipping was actually overall reasonable and my dolls didn't arrive completely destroyed. As you can see, there's absolutely no parking parking packing material in here. So I'm really surprised they came safe. I just um, when you're buying something, especially from someone who doesn't know like the, the value, the resale value of them, you don't really want to say, can you make sure you package them super carefully and all this stuff? Um, because then you might lose out on your dolls. All right. I'm going to leave, in my opinion, the best for last. But first, this was such a strange doll. I've never, I didn't know this existed. This is a Bindi Irwin doll. Um, she's you know, I would have, uh, personally, I would have sued if a doll of me looked like this, but isn't this like a cute doll? I don't know. I thought that this one would be good for my office. I'm not going to lie to you um, because I'm a museum curator. Well, I'm not. I'm a museum collections manager. I curate a museum collection, but I'm not the curator. But I just thought she was really interesting. So she's Wild Republic, which I think is like... What company? Wild Republic's the company, huh? I didn't, I've never seen them make a doll before, but they make like plushies generally. Um, but this is a whole lineup. I think these are the superior, the little animal friends. Lily the snake, Bob the shark, Khan the tiger. Like, this is adorable. So I got the wildlife rescue one who's wearing like the outfit that most matches my job, I think. Um, but there's also Ocean and Surf Adventure. And Rainforest Research. I think Rainforest Research is the lamest one. No offense to that doll, but I don't know. These are just cool. And it says they all can talk. They are three 10 inch doll play sets because they come with a bunch of accessories. And the accessories are really cool. She has a field notebook. She has a little bottle to feed the koala with, I guess. That's what I'm assuming it's for. She's so cute. Um, we have a camera, a little stethoscope. This was just such a strange find um and yeah very cute she oh it's an australia zoo little um it's even branded and it she seems like a good quality doll i'm gonna leave her in box because she's just cute like this but i just thought this was such a bizarre bizarre doll have you guys heard of these were these like in the stores or were they sold in specific places i really have no idea um just a, just a neat one. Just kind of an oddball. I saw her on the shelf when the seller was sending me pictures and I was like, I'm gonna get her. I'm gonna get her. She's cool. All right. The last one. Certainly not the least. Tiana! This is the first edition Disney Store Tiana doll. And this has been my grail for the longest time. And I know she's not worth like a ridiculous amount of money. I've definitely spent this much on dolls a lot of times before. But I wanted her in box, which is kind of difficult. I don't really think these dolls were super heavily collected, especially at that time. Um, but also, I don't like to spend over a certain amount on dolls, um, specifically when, like a Disney store doll, mo for the most part, I feel like will turn up secondhand. So I've just been waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, it's my turn. I got her. And she was only $20. I have not looked at the price of this doll in years, but I remember back in like 2016 when my friend bought her, she was already like a hundred bucks in box. So I don't know what she's at now, but I assume more than that. And this is just, this is, Tiana's my favorite, favorite Disney princess. And this is the first edition one that they made and just so, so cool, so cool. And this doll is like, Usually the, I mean, for the vast majority of instances, the first edition doll by the Disney store is always superior, but this one specifically, rhinestones on the dress, all over, actually well-fitted gloves, big old flowers. She has like a painted on necklace that's like glitter. It's really beautiful. Just, she has so many more details. She even has these little pins poking out of her crown. And she has a little tiny frog figure of herself. And, okay, let's see. I don't even, I feel like this doll probably was in stores before the movie. So let's see what the synopsis was. And, oh, they never used that specific art of Tiana. It's really pretty. Um, in this fairy tale with the twist, Tiana knows that her dreams will come true through hard work, not by wishing on a star or kissing frogs. 
when she finds herself caught up in a magical or magic filled adventure set in New Orleans and its nearby bayou. Tiana friends a jazz playing alligator, a love struck firefly, and some other unexpected guests. As Tiana continues to work for her dream, she under she learns to understand the difference between what she wants and what she really needs. That's actually like a really cute little synopsis. And then we have little Tiana frog next to little Naveen frog. And this box is so glam and fascinating. And this is going to be like, I have some limited edition Tiana dolls and I love, love, love them. And like, they make me super happy. I love Tiana so much, but this doll is going to be like the centerpiece of my Tiana set. The only ones that could beat them are those Ashton Drake ones, which I cannot believe that I did not buy when they were $100. It haunts me to this day. It haunts me. It kills me that I do not have them. And it's my fault because they were up for sale for a long time. I think they even might've gone on sale, like on clearance a little bit at some point. And I didn't save up and get them. <laughs> um, but I have my first edition Disney Store Tiana dolls. I usually do not care if something's the first edition. Like the only time I care is if there's a difference and I think it's a cool difference. But this, in this specific instance, oh my God, this doll is superior. And she has like a different face than most of the Disney Store Tiana dolls. I think I have this doll nude. Like I, I think I've gotten her at the thrift store nude before, but I wasn't able to verify. So now I can compare directly to the one that I have in person, like in person in my hands in her box. So I know it's her, but like, isn't she cool? Isn't she cool? I love her so much. I'm so happy about her. I don't know. I know you guys probably do not care about this one because you're here for the Barbies, but like this, this is the special one to me. She's my baby, baby. And I don't really have any Tiana stuff in box because I just like unboxing things. So now I'm gonna, she's gonna be like right in the middle of the show for the Princess and the Frog stuff and all the others will surround her. And it's just gonna be, it's gonna be so beautiful. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to set her up. <laughs> okay, okay. So obviously she's my favorite find today, but I need to decide who my favorite of the Barbaras is. All right, most unexpected, like the one, we're gonna move Bindi over a little bit, but <laughs> the most unexpected, like the one that I'm the most intrigued by is definitely this one. I just picked her because the, the seller sent me these pictures of the shelves that the, whoever the previous homeowner had just left them on and I circled them. So I couldn't even tell what this doll was, but I just, I was intrigued. Like she just looks like a goddess. She probably is meant to be, like, I don't know. So I picked her um, and I've never seen this doll before and I think she's really cool. So she's the one that I'm the most surprised by. I think my favorite one out of the Barbies, I don't know. I feel like I'm really like, I wasn't expecting to like this one very much. Um, because I really love the, um, Mermaidia and Fairytopia Alina dolls, but she's really pretty. Her makeup is super gorgeous in person, and I've, I don't feel like I see this doll secondhand much, if at all. Certainly not with her stuff. And I think she's really cool. It's a, it's a crying shame that she does not come with shoes, though, because that would elevate it a lot. In box, she looks great, though, and you can't tell she doesn't have shoes unless you really scrutinize it. Also, I just, I think the box design on this doll is the best. I'm thinking of which doll I like the best in box right now. And it's definitely this one, like in box, she's super cool. You get like the, the DVD in there, you get all this like really pretty stuff on the box. The handle is so fun. I miss when there was like really cool handle designs. Like this era specifically, Bratz did it too. They always just had really cool handles on the boxes, which is such a strange detail, but I love it. And then, um, the Barbie looks doll, or I keep doing that, I'm sorry. The Barbie Basics dolls are so, so pretty. And I'm so glad to have more of them because these dolls were like so cool. And so luxe. And there's so many to collect and they're all really expensive. So it'll probably never happen, but I've managed to get three and I paid $20 for each of the three that I have, which is basically retail. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. Like hopefully I can find more of them, but I will be more than happy if these are the only ones I ever get. I really want to unbox them, but I'm gonna hold myself. Like I'm gonna hold off. I might find them with screwed up boxes that would be better to open or I could find them out of box. Like I'll just wait. I will bide my time until I can't anymore and then I unbox them, which might happen. Who knows? Uh, and this doll's like ridiculously pretty. I don't know. She's like really pretty. I really like that she has the kind of golder hair. I think it's really 
really beautiful and her dress is super cool and I love the rose. Although her rubber bands are dry riding, so what if she drops her rose soon? That would be so sad. Um, yeah, that's it for this video. Super excited about these. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I don't do a lot of Barbie videos, but listen, I actually really like Barbie dolls. The problem is that I'm very picky which, with, with which ones will come into my collection because there's so many Barbies out there. This ended up just being a lot of Barbies that I thought were super cool. Um, so I was able to bulk buy them at once like this, but generally I'm very picky with them. Unless I get like an amazing price at a flea market or a thrift store, I'm, I don't put them in my collection. And I want them to be complete because my standard for what a good thrift find is on a Barbie is much higher than most other dolls. And that's just because I know the market for Barbies and I know that there's so many people that casually collected Barbies and just kind of have them sitting around in their houses and people constantly are decluttering and getting rid of stuff so if you just bide your time you'll get you'll get some good Barbies in box in perfect condition because someone just sat them on a shelf for 20 years and didn't ever do anything with them and then now they're mine so I'm I mean obviously I'm gonna sit them on a shelf too so I'm doing the same thing but you know you just have to wait that's my advice. And when I say casual collector, I just mean someone who's not like really into the community specifically and they don't really interact with other doll collectors. They just kind of have some because Barbie's the perfect like you see it and you're like, oh, this is pretty. And you put it on your shelf and you call it a day, you know, which isn't a bad thing. I'm not trying to be like, I'm a I'm an elite collector. and These are the casual collectors. But what I'm saying is like, I don't know how to describe it. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Um, but Buying from casual collections specifically is ideal because I, you're going to get better deals. You're going to get better deals. And honestly, the condition of them is always like really good because they just kind of sat on a shelf. And the, the room, I saw pictures of the room that these were from, was so cool. It had like these cool built-in shelves and it was just full of Barbies. And I bought all the ones from the era that I liked and a few... A few, like a few special angels. This was the only Disney doll that was on their shelves, by the way. Like that seller must have also been a Tiana fan. And if so, well, not the seller, but the original owner. And if so, you have good taste, my friend. You have good taste. I love Tiana so much. And yeah, <laughs> that's it for this video. I'd love to know who your favorite um, doll in this little lineup that I have before you here today is. And yeah. I hope that I can continue to find more Barbies. I'm going to be a lot more diligent hunting them down because so far, so good. I've had two really fantastic, really good deals. I'm um, getting a hold of inbox dolls, especially from the era that I'm looking for. Right now is a really good time to be shopping for the early 2000s ones, despite the eBay prices. If you look in other markets, it's a really good time to be shopping for the 2000s ones. For the past like 10 years, it was mostly the 80s and 90s ones turning up and those aren't my favorite. Some of the 90s ones are really, really cool and I love them, but a lot of them are just kind of, they don't do much for me. Um, that's not to say they're not amazing dolls because they are, but there's thousands of Barbie dolls. I can't collect every single one that I think is a good doll because most of them are. Um, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you guys so, so much for watching for all this time. Bye.